So in this video, I'm going to be answering a question that someone had posed to me here recently. And, you know, they said, Nathan, what do I do when it is obvious, when I know I'm not going to reach my goal? I mean, look at what COVID-19 has done to us. And there's just no way. What do I do? And I'm sure there are a lot of people thinking that same thing at this time because, you know, everybody's plans has practically been derailed. This was not something that could have been foreseen. Now, my answer was rather straightforward, but I'm going to go into the rationale behind that. And I'm also going to give you four things that you can do or four questions that you can ask that will help enhance the way you react to this um, to that particular situation. My response to the individual was based on Confucius's words or a quote from Confucius that said, when it is obvious that your goal cannot be reached, you do not change the goal, but you change the action steps leading to the goal. So often people drop out of the race. They, they quit because it just makes sense. I mean, common sense, you can use common sense to see there's no way I'm gonna reach that. But too often I ask people, all right, so you didn't succeed in that. What else did you try? They're like, well, I didn't try anything else. It was obvious I wasn't gonna make it. And that happens to be one of the fundamental flaws in goal achievement. When it is obvious you cannot succeed, please try something else. Try a different strategy, try a different approach. Do not revise down your goal immediately, okay? Now, before we even go into these four things, the first thing I wanna draw your attention to is actually really paying it, really think about that goal a little bit closely. Because too often, people choose goals that they haven't drilled down into to understand what the, the real core of that goal was. I'll give you an example. So say for instance, a person decided they were gonna sell 100 units of whatever it is they sell, okay, in a year. They were gonna sell 100 of that in 2020. And now it is obvious they're not gonna reach this 100 unit goal. Instead of ditching this goal, the first thing that I would recommend that you do is ask yourself, what was it about this hundred that appealed to me? Was it just the unit count? Was it the money associated with the goal? Was it a certain outcome? Was it maybe a sense of freedom? Maybe it was that I, was, I would be able to purchase something, I'd be able to purchase property with the money that I got from this goal. You really want to understand that because most of the time, the things that people have chosen as goals are often a means to an end, not an end in itself. So what you want to do is find out what was the end? What, what was it that I was trying to really accomplish there? And so if this 100 units was equivalent to, let's say, 400,000, okay? Now, another way to look at that goal is to ask yourself, okay, I may not be able to make 400K the same way I always do in the marketplace, okay? How else can I make this 400K? That's one way to think about it, okay? But the, the first thing you want to do is really understand what this unit count means to you. Whatever metrics you guys have chosen in your organization, really understand what that stands for. Okay? Now, when you do that, you gain more clarity on the essence, on the very basis of that goal. Now, going into the four things that you can ask yourself, once you are clear, about this goal, okay? Once you are clear that it's something that you really want, it is something that really matters to you, okay? There's four things you wanna ask yourself. You wanna ask yourself, okay, let's say, I'm still gonna use that 100 units, okay? I may not be able to make, or it seems obvious that I'm not gonna be able to make this 100 units the way I normally do. What tools can I employ that I'm not currently using right now? What tools can help me 
do more than I'm doing. Remember, if it is obvious that you cannot reach the goal, do not adjust the goal, but adjust your action steps, adjust your activity, adjust what you are doing. So the question is, what tools can I use or bring to the fore to help me reach that goal? Was I doing business face to face before? Is there any way that I can I leverage tools that can help me amplify myself? What tools can make my job easier, make me do it faster, so I can still reach this goal? The second thing is who, okay, I'm gonna go, because I'm gonna put it this way. Who can I leverage, okay? So these two things come down to leverage. What tool can I leverage and who can I leverage? Who can I bring into this mission and vision and plan that can help me do better, that can help me do more than I would have done by myself in this market? Who can I partner with? Who can I do a joint venture with? Who do I need to know? Who do I need to talk to? Who can I get to coach me? Who, who, who? You need to keep asking yourself, who do I need to work with in order to reach that goal? The next thing that you wanna ask yourself is what strategy do I need to employ? Because let's say for instance, if you were in sales and you had a strictly offline strategy right, or you had a strictly inbound strategy, and it is obvious that the phone's not ringing and people are not showing up, you want to ask yourself, what other strategies can I employ to help me reach that goal? What other things can I do if I was, you know, if I'm a coach, for instance, if I were working with people one-on-one, -on -one, okay, I've lost three months in the year. In order for me to reach this goal, I'm going to need to use a different strategy. Can I employ a different strategy? Can I run events? Can I have group sessions? What other strategies can I employ? Can I create a different product and have a variety of products as opposed to having one big product? Perhaps that product was a big high ticket product. Now, can I have a bunch of little products that can perhaps get, bring me the revenue? Because maybe people are more willing to buy your smaller products because they can handle that, they can absorb that. They may not be able to buy that great big one. You've changed your strategy, but perhaps your revenue outcome, that 400K, right, may still be achievable because all you have to do now is focus on serving more people as opposed to the few. That's a change of strategy, okay? Um, and which strategy can come tactics, for instance, but the strategy will usually determine the tactics. So you wanna ask yourself, what new strategies can I employ? What strategies are favorable in this marketplace? If I'm a real estate agent, what strategies do I need to start looking at that before I didn't quite care for? And lastly, you wanna ask yourself, what habits do, it's actually not lastly, I'm gonna add another one, um, what habits do I need to start? What habits do I need to begin to exhibit? And these habits are gonna tie into, I was gonna add another number, but I'm gonna keep it at this. Um, I'm actually gonna scratch those habits for a minute, you'll see why. I'm gonna switch habits for identity. What identity do I need to assume? What new identity do I need to have? Maybe I was that person that, you know, only worked a certain number of days, I only did certain things, I was, you know, lazy or whatever it is that you used to do. See, because the identity will usually determine the habits, okay? So you could just ask yourself, what habits do I need to start? But usually in order to start a new habit, you'll have to assume a different identity. So they're all tied t together. But who do I need to be to be able to achieve this number? 
because somewhere along the line, somebody is hitting this number with ease because their goal was 300, okay? But now they're looking at it and it's like, oh, I'm only gonna reach, reach 100. So it doesn't mean this 100 is out of your reach. It's just that you are not the person, you're not built to make this 100. So you ask yourself the question, who do I need to become? Do I need to be more confident? Do I need to be more you know, outgoing? Do I need to promote more? Do I need to learn how to sell or how to close? Or do I need to wake up earlier than I used to so I can go to the gym at 5 a.m. and I can get to work at 7 and I can start making calls? What habits do you need to assume? These four things will help you bring you closer to your goal instead of revising that goal to 80 units and just being the person that you are and just coasting through. Because here's the thing though, I'm gonna close with this. If you revise that goal down, your mindset is also gonna be revised down. So it's just gonna be as difficult for you to hit the 80 as it would be for you to hit the 100 in, in many cases. So you might as well keep the 100 and push come to shove, you'll hit 80, as opposed to shooting for 80 and hitting 60. That's one thing. The other thing is this, if your goal was chosen right, if your goal was chosen the right way, your goal really meant a lot to you, why do you want to abandon it? And who's to say, okay, you say, okay, 2020 sucks. I can't wait for it to be over. I'm going to hit that goal in 2021. Who's to say something's not going to happen in 2021? So you do not have the luxury of pushing forward your goals. You have to face it where it is, where it stands. Jim Rohn says, do not ask that things were better. I mean, do not ask that things were easier. Wish that you were better. And that is what our objective here is. If you can employ tools, if you can leverage other people, if you can find other strategies that might be worth using, and then you can adjust your habits and your identity, your chances of hitting that goal is still high. And if nothing else, you'll know that you, you put in the good old college try, you fought to the end. So please do not give up on your goals just yet. Do not begin to revise your, uh, um, your, your projections just yet. Unless you're in, you know, on Wall Street and you're in a public traded company where yes, it makes sense to revise or not give guidance for the next quarter because if they do and they fall short, the shareholders are gonna kill them. That's different, okay? But in your personal life, in your small business, in your organization, if you're a leader, it is necessary to hold down the fort. It is necessary for you to tell your people, hey, look, we're still going to go for this goal. We just may need to do things differently. I need some ideas on how we can do things differently. How, other, how many other ways are there to reach this number? What else can we do? Because I want to pay you guys the same amount and you guys deserve to be paid the same amount. Let's go to work. I'm going to stop there. <laughs> I hope you end up finding this video valuable. This is a time to do a lot of thinking. This is a time to buckle in gear, gear up because here's the thing. As you're shifting into a higher gear, a lot of people are downshifting because a lot of people are built with to be pessimistic to start with. Okay. So they're already talking themselves out of the market. If you can buckle up, lace up, and get into this field and play it with the best you can. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy, but it's gonna be worth it. You'll come out a better person. You'll come out, you know, very successful. I have many stories to account for this idea because it all starts in the mind. So I hope you find this video valuable. Um, I hope you hang in there in COVID-19. We're gonna get through it. No matter what, be the best you can be. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.